Hey everybody, it's Doug here, Doug Mystic Guy on Board Game Geek. Uh, just bringing you a special episode of some Kickstarter unboxings. Um, you know, over the past year or so, I've invested in a couple of Kickstarters, and it seems like uh, when they decide to come in, they all come in at once. So I got a whole skew of them, slew of them anyway, in at about the same time, and I wanted to go over them with you, open them up, show you what's inside, and uh, talk about uh, why I back the game. So anyway, let's get started. The first one I want to pull out is Teeny Epic Kingdoms, which, uh, you know, was this is the deluxe edition, and I will post in the show notes uh, what I pledged for so you can see what it was. But this is the deluxe edition of Teeny Epic Kingdoms. You can see it comes in a relatively small box, but it's big game, small box. Um, if you've been following along, this is a 4X fantasy game where you control a race. Um, I do like this. This is kind of neat. I mean, not necessary, but a nice addition is putting the artwork of all of the races uh, that you can play, or at least the majority of them, inside the, the box interior. Pretty cool. And by the way, this is the first of several, so I won't spend too much time on any one of them. I'm just going to show you. This is the rule book that comes with it. And I thought it would be like a little fold-out, because it's not a very big game, but the rule book's actually, though miniaturized, is rather nice. Um, Full-color component uh, lists and pictures. Uh, nice clear rules and setup. Uh, pretty good stuff. Just flipping through that for you, showing you. It's just a, it's about 11 pages long uh, in total, and part of that is things like credits and stuff as well. Again, nice artwork on both front and back. And uh, there's this. I have not opened this yet, but uh, this is the tokens. Let me uh, open that here. And uh, looks like there's some other stuff in there, but we're gonna get that opened up. So there's uh, uh, the expansion. So there's a little expansion rules right there. Again, in full color. Talks about what they are. Set of tokens for those for the expansion, and then two more race boards. Which is, I, I'm going to assume these were from the Kickstarter. I'm not 100% sure, but you got the order of th yeah. These are the Kickstarter ones. The order of Gamelin, the Satyrs, uh, and I'll show you the artwork on those. Pretty nice. Satyrs and the constructs, the golems, and then of course the token board. So that's uh, in there, and then of course the regular components. This is the score track, the tower track, which you, you uh, build your tower on. It gives you more victory points the higher your tower goes. This is the action card that shows what the actions are that are available during a given turn. And then we've got a number of reasonably thick, like at least cardstock thick, uh, full double-sided tiles, which I thought was pretty cool. There's a lot of them. And we'll just show you a few. And you can see that they have all the, the different resources on them. And, you know, you'll build out a map as you go. And then, of course, there's all the races. So you've got the orcs. And I'm not going to go over their abilities or anything, because I don't want this to be a three-hour video, because I'm covering, I think, one, two, at least four games. So uh, you've got the orcs, the humans, halflings, dwarves. And they all have their own special abilities. The lizard folks, goblins, elves, undead, valkyrie, dark elves. Centaurs, merfolk, and shapeshifters. Now, the, the other cool thing is on the back of these, you also have the full color, the full artwork that's on the cover on the front. So you got that, and on the back, you got the full artwork representing each of the races. Pretty good. I like the artwork a lot. Suits the game. And so that's that. Um, and then, of course, there's all the other components uh, the meeples, your first player marker, the castles, um, resource tokens for your board, etc. And that's, and then of course, dice for rolling. And that is Teeny Epic Kingdoms. Now, I also have Teeny Epic Defenders coming. Now, why did I get this game? Well, I like 4X games a lot. I like Civilization. More recently, I've played Patch History, which is, I guess it's kind of the same thing. But uh, I like games like that. Um, and this one is a, well, promises to be a pocket-sized game that plays relatively quickly. And so that really uh, intrigued me, because I do like to play games where you're kind of building a, a, a kingdom, warring with other races, etc. And it does say that this, uh, let's see if it says on here, uh, it doesn't say how long it will take on here, but anyway, it's not supposed to be an incredibly long game, there it is. So about 30 minutes, which is perfect for a little game like this, and you still get to scratch the itch of playing the 4X Conquering Kingdom game. So that is 
teeny epic kingdoms, and that's uh, why I backed it, because I like 4X games, and I like the fact that it's short and, and very uh, portable. So let's move on. Next up, I have Evolution, and this is another genre I like, and I wish that one of my favorite games of all time is Dominant Species. Now, that's a three and a half hour version of something like this where you're evolving a species over time, and they're, they're, uh, it, it's different, of course, very different. But uh, this is uh, another game that, that deals with the evolution of creatures, and uh, I'm going to open the box for you and start to show you what's inside of here. Now, um, Evolution, and again, I'll put them in the show notes, but this is from North Star Games. And this is the, uh, the, uh, the, what's called the watering hole, where you put all the food resources that are collected during the turn so that the herbivores and that can eat. That's, it's a very thick stock. Nice artwork on the back. Nice resin finish, or, or uh, sorry, um, whatever, linen finish, so it's, it'll stay sturdy for a while. And of course the rule book, again, uh, one of the things I, I like about Kickstarters is because they raise the extra money, they can do things like do the full color rule books and enhanced components, things like that. So, as you can see, the rule book, while it has uh, like um, pencil style drawn art, it's still really good. And uh, very nice, clear, and concise uh, instructions, and it gives you also a rundown of all the cards, etc. And an ad for North Star Games in the back. Plus, you get these player aids that talk about the stu what you can do, what the traits are. And on back, it shows the cards. And of course, these can be folded. I haven't done that yet. And there's one for each possible player. And this is made out of uh, glossy, so like uh, I guess it's what you'd make a menu out of, for example, that you get have seen in a restaurant. So it's kind of a glossy, plasticky finished, uh, maybe coated uh, art or board. And then you have these. Now these are the same as these boards, and you get quite a few of these though. Over the, these ones, They're, they represent your race, and you, just, you keep the popul uh, the size of your race and the population of your race and the food that you've eaten in here, and they have a, a bunch of different ones. These were Kickstarter components. The regular com the regular boards look like that, and they're fine. The regular boards are great. They're thick stock, and they're ready to go. But this is just an added bonus for the Kickstarter. And I'll show you those. So you got uh, different dinosaurs, and they're double-sided, same thing. And you can see that there's a couple different types in here. Okay. Slightly different, and that's those. So we'll put those aside. And then, of course, you have your the start player marker. There's two. There's actually, I kind of like the wooden one. I don't know. <laughs> but they give you two. You get, this is the kick, when you got Kickstarter, was a plastic, uh, plastic dinosaur figure, and then you get this one in the base game if you didn't kickstart it. And, of course, a bunch of cubes for tracking things. And then this big bag for all the feeding, uh, food tokens that come into the game. Quite a few of them, and they go into a bag. Uh, you put them in a bag as you collect them for victory points. These are just uh, to show you uh, the different creatures. They're just uh, like I guess they're like coasters, but uh, I don't know. I don't believe they have a purpose in the game unless there's a variant that I haven't read yet. And then of course, you got tons, two stacks of these cards that are all the traits that you can have for uh, uh, your creatures, and you can have more than one going at the same time. You can see there's several hundred cards, and I'll show you some of the artwork on those. Fertile, foraging. And again, I just got these, so I haven't shuffled or anything. Um, hard shells. So these are different traits that your creature can evolve with uh, during the, the game. Makes it kind of neat. And then these are the pouches, and each character, each player will have a pouch, and when you take the food tokens, you put them in there, they, they help you generate victory points. And it's got a nice tray, nice insert. So all of these, by the way, are the, those boards that, because uh, you can ha actually end up having multiple species going at the same time, and you will, uh, during the, the course of the gameplay. So, and these, these little vinyl bags are really nicely done, too, with some nice artwork on them. So there's that one. Didn't show you too many of them. There's, like, a little gecko creature. There's that. You can see that. And they're nice. They're, they're pretty cool. I like them a lot. Anyway, that, and again, I appreciate the nice insert. Everything's cleanly uh, uh, put into the box and, and can neatly be put away. Anyway, that is um, Evolution by North Star Games. And we're going to continue on uh, and start to look at something else. I think next up is Kill Shakespeare, another one I really liked. It's a semi-cooperative game uh, that has a lot of cool mechanics in it. Again, this is just an unboxing, so I'm not going to get into the mechanics of it. But on top of my box when I got it was a comic book telling some of the story of 
Kill Shakespeare. Uh, you can see it's really well done, very professional. Um, got a ton of dialogue in it, a lot of a lot of artwork and pictures though. Anyway, that's kind of secondary. I haven't open, I haven't sliced this open yet, so let me get something and I'll open the plastic up and we'll take a look inside. Okay, here we go with Kill Shakespeare. Nice heavy duty box. Again, two to four players. It's from IDW Games, 120, 180 minutes, so it's a long one. It's just 13 and up. Guess what the theme of the insurrection and stuff like that, maybe. So there's the other episode, or the other comic book of Kill Shakespeare. I guess it's the second. Yeah, number two. And this is the uh, kick, the game exclusive one that comes in the game. Uh, I think it's just probably the same artist, so yeah, looks like it. In fact, it looks like much the same storyline even. Well, maybe not, but uh, it, it looks similar. So anyway, that's uh, some good reading I'll get to on that. And of course you have the the uh, full color rule book, very nicely done. I like it uh, when everything's laid out nice and clean. Setup's got its own section, round sequence. Bidding, I like, I like games with bidding mechanics. So you know, I didn't really get into why, well I kind of did get into why I got Evolution. So uh, yeah, with Evolution, um, again, with uh, Dominant Species being one of my favorite games and the thought of evolving a creature and everything, that's what really struck me to the project. Plus it looked like a fun game and the artwork was cool and the, all the um, enhancements you could do to your creatures were cool. Anyway, but back to Kill of Shakespeare. I like the concept of this game with uh, you trying to keep Shakespeare from getting killed like during a revolutionary type period. Really interesting mechanics. Cool stuff. So that's the book. And then we've got the board. The board's large, so I don't know if I... Yeah, it's not that bad. I'll open it up for you. So here's the board. See, I could open it up and pan around for you. Looks like there's a... we got to... i got to build a wheel here. But uh, that is the board. Just show it to you there. Pretty good size with all the different regions and all the cards that go around the outside of that. So this one came by surprise. I didn't get a notification that it was in the mail. It just was. And that's okay. I'll take it. Um, been looking forward to seeing this. And a while, a while back I had said that I was a little frustrated with Kickstarter because some of my kick, stuff I kickstarted are showing up in retail before they get to me. This was one of those. But it, it came soon after, so I'm not as frustrated as I thought I was. So tokens. I, these are influence tokens, I think, for your your, uh, for you as a character, player, and these are the boards for all the tokens. You can see there's lots of those tokens. And then money and stuff like that. Looks like one of them came out as well here. I know they're going to end up in the box. Hopefully they gave you, gave us extra baggies for that because that's always a problem. Here's the wheel that goes on the board. Uh, lots of cards. Let's pop those open. See what we got here. Um, okay, I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, again, I know that the I couldn't tell you specifically what these cards do yet. Though I've watched some videos and saw the gameplay. But I think these uh, their, their artwork's really cool on them. Very good art. So I'll probably do some playthroughs of these as I uh, get them, especially the semi-cooperative one, because then I can do more. There's more of those cards with a green back, blue back, green back, and then more such cards with a dark green back. So I'm not going to open all those up because I think uh, the artwork's cool, obviously. There's a lot of artwork on them, like this one has a harbor in it. Pretty cool stuff. And you know, those uh, go on the outside of the around the outside of the game board, I believe. And then these are the quests, kind of like Yido style. In fact, I think these are the same folks. Um, IDW, I think the Yido, if I recall. I may be wrong on there, but if I'm not, this would make sense because this it reminds me a lot of Yido, which is one of the things that attracted me to the game, actually. So I'm a big fan of Yido, and I like the, the way that the quests roll, where you have to kind of build stuff toward those quests. Pretty neat stuff. And go to certain locations, etc. There are tons and tons of these. And uh, you can see they're in Axe. Axe 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5. Yeah, lots of them. And they get more complex as they go along. So more stuff that you have to have to complete them. Those are the quest tokens. And then there's some additional of those cards in red. I guess they're by player. And then uh, there's a baggy. Look, they gave us extra baggies, so they did the right thing. Nice. And of course there's some extra 
missions, another stack of missions, different back, I guess, or are the same. Yeah, they're different. So they're probably for different phases of the game. Kind of like, uh, you know, a Yido, you have your your harder ones, light, easier ones. And these are the character cards. So let's open these up. Let's see what we got here. I'll, looks like I may be doing that off camera as well. Nope, that was easy. Okay. I like these kind of sealed cellophane wrappers. I actually end up keeping some of them for some of the games and put them back in. Uh, this is Falstaff. These are, you know, all characters from from Shakespeare's uh, works. Hamlet, Juliet, who looks like a warrior. Uh, Joan of Arc, more, more so. Othello, Viola, and then the score track. So those are the, the characters that come in the, the game. And lastly, your meeples for, for probably the score track there, if I remember correctly. Again, you know, you wait for these these uh, kickstarts for so long, you kind of start to forget uh, uh, what you got coming. Anyway, that is Kill Shakespeare. And so, why did I get Kill Shakespeare? It reminded me of Yido, with some other elements and the, the story around uh, try, the rulers trying to kill Shakespeare and you trying to keep him alive and also do your thing. I think if Shakespeare dies, you lose the game type scenario. Anyway, that uh, was my basis for, for wanting to back uh, Kill Shakespeare. If you're a fan of Yido, you probably will like the concepts around this one as well. Uh, and it looks like a fun, epic game. So, next up. This, to me, was the, the big one I was waiting for outside of Arcadia Quest. And I, I have to uh, uh, give credit to um, Cool Mini or Not. They've been putting out not only some great games, but their Kickstarters have been uh, really well managed. You know, Zombie Side, the... the this one, Dogs of War, which I got. I did have a problem with this for some reason. It didn't get shipped when it was supposed to. I, I wrote them, and next thing I know, it was in the mail. So um, I got it, and here it is. And so I'm really excited with this one. This one's a really neat game and got great miniatures and pieces to it. I like cool components. Um, what attracted me to this game was originally that uh, I was looking at games that was coming up from Cool Meter or Not because I've enjoyed so many of them. Um, they've been great. Like, um, I mean, I'm, I have both seasons of Zombie Side so far, and I, I've kickstarted the third one as well. And then also I got Arcadia Quest with a lot of the big bonus stuff, and man, my kids and I are eating that game up. It's a fun game. And this one appears to be no different. It appears to be great fun. Anyway, this one's all sealed up too. As you can see, I got a lot of extra stuff with it, plastic coins and bonus cards and these foil special cards as well and then also some special characters but let me uh, pop the cellophane on this off and we'll get dig it in okay so you know while i'm opening this i'm just going to talk about kickstarter in general like i said i've been kind of frustrated with kickstarter a little bit because some of the things dogs of war was another one but that that's because there was an error we're getting into retail before i got my game and that's kind of frustrating uh there's another company i'm not going to say who they are because i'm not going to i'm not going to bash a, a company these games i really love but uh, I have another one that I, I was hoping to get soon. And I actually wrote them and said, hey, I know you've got a long shipping process going on. Um, I want to do a big video for you. I'm not asking you to do anything outside of just put mine in the mail since I've already purchased it and it's going to be shipped at some point anyway. Um, didn't see where that would be an issue, but they actually didn't do it for me. I was kind of shocked. I've done videos for multiples of their games. I love their games. a huge fan. And I'm a little bit less of a fan now. <laughs> so, uh, not that I'm not going to enjoy their games any, for it, any longer, but, you know, and I'm, I'm ranting here a little bit, but if I had it truly asked them to do something absolutely special, like give me free stuff, I'd understand. But all I really asked for was, can you put in the mail what I already bought? And, you know, it was a big investment, too. So I thought that would be a problem, and I told them straight up the reason I wanted it is because I want to get it to the table and do a video series for them. Anyway, which I'm still going to do, but... Uh, you know, anyway, just a little frustrated and disappointed with that. So Kickstarter's kind of been good and bad. And there's some other ones that I've just waited forever. I mean, I did get my Myth Second Wave stuff, which is awesome. But uh, like Cthulhu Wars, which was probably the biggest Kickstarter I backed in, since the since I started backing Kickstarter games, isn't, I don't even know, it's not going to get here this year. It's over a year late already. And it, 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 I get it. I'm not mad. I'm not screaming, yeah, it's just a game, it'll get here when it gets here, but uh, still, it's kind of made me back off and not do as many as I was. So anyway, as I've been talking, I've been kind of flipping through the rule book for Dogs of War, just showing you how nice, nicely done it is. The rule book is beautiful, uh, showing that here we're seeing the, the world and the, the characters that are in the world. This game is really cool, the concept of mercenaries hiring out to these different groups and trying to support these factions is a really neat idea. I like it a lot. 
And uh, you can see there's quite a few cool characters in the artwork. is absolutely stellar, which is kind of a cool mini or not staple these days, especially when it comes to the miniatures. But that's the rule book. And then these are the tokens. So you see coins, which I have a replacement from the Kickstarter, which are plastic coins. So they're the same. They've got the same logo on. They're just uh, plastic as opposed to tokens. And then the board of tokens here. There's two more board, two total boards of tokens. And then the board, which I think is also, and again, another cool mini or not trait, which I see as a new thing with Ar uh, Arcadia Quest. Now, this is uh, normal. Looks so Arcadia Quest has so many miniatures. It's got the zombie side style box with the plastic trays and everything, and the big boxes of miniatures. So I like that. But this this has a really nice insert, and I hope they they trend toward that. As you can see, everything fits nicely. There's room for tokens and stuff. It's great. But uh, and I saw a video, there was a video that they showed where actually they were noting that every single one of the Kickstarter items that I have here can also get in there. But here's the board now. I know it's too big for the camera, but we'll pan around and show you what that looks like. This is Dogs of War board. Now you notice that the, you saw that beautiful map inside the book and you don't play on the map. You, this is the board you play on. Um, and it's you're buying for factions and etc. Uh, and that's the, the game board. I love the art style on it. Very pretty. But more so than that is the character art. Let me look at these guys. Sir Blackmane. And I got some bonus characters too that I'll, I'll show you. Uh, Lady Lady Ordalia Macbeth. These are the ones from the... I don't, I don't know if these are all from the base game or the extra ones in here or not. But the Nameless Conqueror. And, uh, Storm Crow, who I think is very cool. And Captain O'Malley. And then to add to that, not only do you have some faction tokens, which are really neat, but you also have these really awesome miniatures. You could paint them, but you really don't even need to because they're colored to their character color as well. Um, and they all have their own space in here, as you can see. Just really amazing busts of these characters. I mean, look at the detail on that. Pretty cool. Sorry, the light's not getting the best because hat, but uh, you get the idea. Very, very nicely done. It's done in the same plastic as some of their other miniatures, which uh, I like because it's softer and it's not as likely to get brittle and break, which is cool. And then, um, card, let me see what else. So we got these the faction tokens here, which are really neat. Look at those. Really nicely done. Very cool. And I can put it back in there because it's one of the things I like about their, their inserts. And then, of course, there's these uh, markers. More markers. These are the stands for the, the, some of the other stuff. For these, I believe, these, these things. And again, I'm not 100% sure on all this stuff. i got to read through it. But as I understand it, there's plenty of room for everything in here. Uh, these are some, some, some of the cards. And then these are the cards. Now, I got these ones, but I also have the... I think these are the same. I think they've been replicated in most cases, the foil cards. I don't recall. This might be for an expansion. I'll have to look. But let's pop those open and take a look. So you can see the house cards here in the front. And then these are all, there's, these are like, uh, I don't know what kind of, what these cards are for, but they're like action cards or something like that. And then there's all the, see, I think the, the foil cards replace these, actually. And we'll take a look. Yeah, look at those. Those are all the soldier, soldier cards. And I got the foil ones, which are part of the Kickstarter, not part of the regular set. Um, so we'll get those back in the box. I may put them in wrong. That's because nah, they, they definitely don't go that way. Well, anyway, I'll get it back in the box in a moment. We'll keep going. Let's take a look at some other stuff. So, and here's the components for your board. Did you, did you put on the board? You notice there are additional busts of each character, which is really cool. I mean, look at the plastic in this. It's pretty nice. Anyway, that is in the base box here. Of course, again, all the tokens and everything and the cards. And again, these foil cards, you can see that it looks like they, they replaced the soldier cards. That's kind of neat. Uh, let's go on to some of the specific uh, Kickstarter boxes. So here is Alhazred. And that's his miniature in this box right there. You can see it's, this is an expansion box. So now they say it's too bad because the box is even beautiful. That all this stuff will fit. You can get rid of them, the stuff from here, or and just put it all in the main game game box, and it'll fit fine. But you can see it's got the bust there, and then the other bust, and then the, the player board. But it, it's one of these for him, and then also some additional. No, it's just the player board, which is really all I need. Anyway, it's in a couple languages, is all. 
And so that's his, and we'll take his bust out and take a look at it. Still pretty cool. Let's see if we can get it out of there. There we go. Pretty nice. And, and there's a couple more of them. I'm not a huge unboxing fan, but there's so much stuff here. I just thought I'd share some of it with you. Maybe I won't open the other ones. I'll just show you. But we also have I also have Count Yago and his bust here. He's pretty neat. Again, just different factions, and they they all do have their own special things about them. And then also um, Viscount Percival de Hiver, and that's his miniature right there. And again, the same thing. It's got his character card in there and uh, and the other busts for the game board. And then lastly, there's some Kickstarter extras. Kickstarter extra, whatever these cards are, mission cards, action cards, whatever. World Breakers, I think. Uh, new Rewards, a little board in here for something, and this is for an exp little expansion. So that is all the stuff that I got. Well, you know what? That may be true. I think when they said that everything can fit in a box, they were talking about also underneath the tray. I'm not sure, but the, there's looks like there's enough room under there for stuff. And the tray is quite nice. So once I get this all situated, maybe I'll flash when I do a video walkthrough of this or something, I'll show you how the tray lays out with everything in it. But again, thanks, uh, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to end it here. Those were the games that I have right now. I'll post this up uh, pretty quickly so you can start to see some of this stuff. And um, then later on, I'll get into some specific plays of these games so you can see what they're all about. Uh, really neat stuff. And uh, like I said, good day for Kickstarter for me, or good week rather. Because uh, I also got Arcadia Quest just not that long ago, and uh, I, I kick-started um, uh, Through the Ages, and I got that recently as well, but that's a reprint, so I didn't, didn't think it would be worth putting in a video. Everybody's seen that one uh, a million times over. It's just a newer version, a reprinted version done through Kickstarter. So anyway, guys, that's it for me for right now. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you watched. Uh, and so why Dogs of War? Because it was cool meeting or not. It's it's. Beautiful game. I like the concept of the you know having the mercenaries trying to vie for power with the factions and fighting and etc. Uh, it's a really cool concept. And uh, when I frankly when I saw the bus, the miniature bus, I just had to pick that up because I thought that was too cool. And so I'm going to try and get his, get everything back in the box now. Uh, but that's going to end this video. So thanks guys for watching. And please leave your comments if you have some other things. Like I said, I'm going to post in the show notes what level of a purchase I did. I you know I don't remember when I did. Because these take so long. I don't remember if I got extras during in the pledge manager that uh, changed what I had or not. I, I just simply don't recall. I don't think I did. I think like with Dogs of War Effect, I purposely didn't because it looked like I had enough. Um, and I still wasn't so convinced on the game. Like uh, with Kill Shakespeare, it looked so much like Guido, I knew I'd like it. This one looks really fun. I think I'm going to really enjoy it, but not 100% sure. So anyway, and then with the Deluxe Edition... Uh, Teeny Epic Kingdoms, I did not get any extras because I, it just, again, didn't look like I needed to. So um, I simply uh, got what came with the uh, Deluxe Edition, and that was it. And I don't even remember if there were any extras, but there were some for this that I did not get. I do know that. Um, so, again, that is Dogs of War from Cool Mini or Not and Spaghetti Western Games. Awesome stuff. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to talk to you soon.